What's up everyone, it's Vivi and welcome back to some more Sly Cooper. So when I saw this scene from Sly 3, I thought that, hmm, does Sly really have amnesia? Did he really get hit on the head? It doesn't seem like it, right? Plus that wink we got in the end, yep, he was faking it alright. Sly left his cane, an opening to the loot. He left with Carmelita. Bentley and Murray, they parted ways, but Penelope and Bentley, they kept working together. In Sly 3, Carmelita just proves what their relationship is like. It's complicated. She said no one hurts my criminal. Then she pretends that Sly is her partner, Constable Cooper. Carmelita, we get it, you have a thing for Cooper. If you hated him so much, why would you pretend that he's a member of Interpol? That to me makes it seem like she wants to be close to Cooper, without all of this thief shenanigans. Now the question is, why did Sly pretend to have amnesia? To get closer to Interpol? No, not at all. He wanted to get close to Carmelita, be part of an actual, healthier relationship. Knowing Sly, he was always flirting. Carmelita deep down, she was so into it. Considering how she blushed in the comics when she first met Sly on that rooftop, yeah. She certainly has something for this guy. She's had something for this guy for like a very long time. And why was she acting as if she really wanted to put Sly behind bars? It's her job, she didn't want to lose her position. Even if she had put him behind bars, deep down she knew that Sly Cooper would escape. After everything he's done, yeah, he's capable of doing that, especially when you have Bentley and Murray on your side. Maybe Carmelita was always trying to arrest Sly just as a way of getting close to him. You know, to act professional. Anyways guys, Carmelita loves Sly. It's obvious, right? Now let's go back to the ending of Sly 3. She calls him Constable Cooper about that. What did her co-workers think of an ex-thief being part of the team? Was he actually part of the team? I don't think so. I'll talk about this very soon. I mean Interpol, well, Carmelita was always running after him. Interpol was most likely looking for Sly. In conclusion, to have this guy in the same building, didn't Carmelita suspect anything? She did. I will get to this. Just wait. Going with the intro of Sly Cooper 4, Sly was enjoying life on the other side of the law. He was curious, he wanted to know what it was like. And eventually he got this urge of just pulling another heist. Carmelita with time. She started having this feeling that Cooper was up to something. She knew that this dude wouldn't change. She tried changing him, but she told herself that's part of his nature, I can't do anything about that. So she decided to go with the flow. She liked being with him. If she had brought up Hey Cooper, you're faking it, I know you. Sly would have perhaps left. Did Carmelita want that? No. She was enjoying her time with the raccoon. She just felt so happy and close, cause she loves him deep down. And her holding the picture is a very strong fact. Small thought. People who keep saying that Carmelita was watered down, she felt weaker in Sly 4. Well think about it a little, what if love actually affected her? She spent time with Cooper, not being a thief, for some time, a couple of months we can say. The fact that she was lied to, faking that amnesia, it could have affected her. She loves the dude. So when she was with the gang, in the past, time traveling and all that, she kept thinking of what Sly has done. Like why would he do this? I thought I saw another side of you, we were having such a great time. You had to ruin it because you wanted to pull off this heist. But look, Carmelita herself said that she was lying to herself, but she just kept going with the flow. She didn't want to come out and say it. She knew something was wrong, but she was enjoying her moment. So that right there could have psychologically affected her. Have any of you guys ever thought of that? So we know what happened between the ending of Sly 3 and the beginning of Sly 4. Carmelita had a healthier relationship with Sly, right? During this time, Le Paradox was doing Black Market, stealing treasure and putting him in a museum doing some illegal stuff in the background. That blimp Sly was staring at during the special short, that's when I think he started having this itch, as he said. Now about what I said before, was Sly Cooper actually part of Interpol since Carmelita called him Constable Cooper? I don't think so. He took his mask off, he was wearing different clothes, he was actually wearing pants. Sly 4 makes it seem like they were in a simple relationship, which I believe is true. That doesn't mean he was part of Interpol, he was just in the company of of an Interpol agent, as he said in the introduction. Sly saying being on the other side of the law, it doesn't necessarily mean that he worked for Interpol. He was just living the normal life of a normal citizen, not being a thief at all. When Carmelita was on an assignment, Sly slipped out, as if he wasn't part of the team. Wouldn't Carmelita have contacted Sly, hey, I need help, join me on this mission? But the cutscenes, the settings, make it seem like he was part of Interpol. If anything at all, he was most likely given the task to just 
just spy. I don't see him being part of Interpol, judging by the dialogue of the game. If I'm missing anything, please point it out. Sure, he was called Constable Cooper, but we don't have enough evidence in Sly 4 to prove that he was part of the team. Oh, what about this one? Good evening, this is Sly Cooper requesting a ride. He probably likes saying that maybe Carmelita said that quite a few times. He was just imitating her. Bentley found that cute. So yeah, I wouldn't take that as evidence. If he was part of Interpol, really, his ID would have been forged, and who would have been behind that? Carmelita? I wouldn't imagine it. Okay, we get it, they were in a simple relationship, but how come he wasn't recognized? Well look, he wasn't wearing his hat, he wasn't wearing any blue, he wasn't wearing his mask. Raccoons can look very similar in the Sly Cooper universe, so there you go. And the fact that he was wearing pants made him look different. So for those of you wondering, how come he wasn't recognized? Well, he was wearing different clothes. He was right there in public, in that museum, no one recognized him. I'm sure people have spotted him in the streets. If they couldn't recognize him in the museum, that means no one at Interpol recognized Sly Cooper in those different clothes. Interpol even has footage of Sly. So it's not about how did Interpol accept Carmelita being in a relationship with a thief. Rather, it's about how they didn't recognize him. Next, there's one thing I don't understand. Why did they get Interpol all wrong in the Sly Cooper universe? Why not simply call it a police agency? Interpol doesn't have the power to make arrests. Interpol, theoretically, is this network, which makes a bunch of police agencies across the world come together to solve mysteries across some borders. But anyways, with that out of the way, I'd imagine someone being very jealous of Sly being so close to Carmelita. This guy is the only character who knew who Sly was, really. He didn't let his disguise fool him. What he tried to do was try and expose him, but he failed. This guy I'm referring to is Winthorpe from issue number 2. Imagine his reaction knowing that Cooper is close to Carmelita, a thief being close to an Interpol agent. Could he have done something crazy due to his love for Carmelita? Could he have done it unintentionally? Was he taken advantage of? Could he have gone to such lengths where he came into contact with Le Paradox? At that time, Winthorpe didn't really have any idea of who Le Paradox was or what he was up to, but Le Paradox, let's say he came to him. He tells him, what do you know about this Cooper boy? I see he's very close to your friend Carmelita. We can say Le Paradox knew that that was Sly Cooper. How did he know? Well, he has a bunch of guards, a bunch of eyes everywhere. Let's keep it simple. Winthorpe, unintentionally, he starts complaining and wondering why Carmelita fell for such a thief. And then out of nowhere, he says, if only it weren't for that stupid cane of his. Always around with them everywhere, pulling off successful heists because of that cane. And then Le Paradox wonders, cane you say? Le Paradox wanted to erase the Coopers from the timeline. But then he wondered, how can I get rid of the Coopers, get rid of their reputation by not altering the timeline too much? Himself, pretty much. His family line. Why not steal their precious gem and be considered the greatest thief alive? So pretty much, he thought of this idea due to a certain someone. In this video, I talked about Winthorpe. It could be anyone else. Or maybe Le Paradox had thought of this idea on his own. So once Le Paradox had decided to go with that plan, steal the canes, he kept an eye on Cooper. And that blimp we saw in the animated short, that's him staring at Sly. Anyways, at the end of the day, this is just a theory. So guys, in the comment section below, tell me what you think. Do you think Carmelita and Sly were actually working together, and to what extent? Or do you feel like they were in a simple relationship, Sly being close to Carmelita? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, and as always, I've been Vivi, and thank you for watching.